there are several uh, instances that we talked about how to put together a print layout, but I think this is something that we have to touch upon here as well. So we already talked about how to organize a project content. Now let's get this uh, to, to the printer and, and see how we can get it out from the system. Uh, yes, uh, first things first, uh, in our spline when you print something is the pr print as you see uh, logic behind. So if you see something in front of you, you can easily print it by just simply go to the print file, print or print to PDF and yes. this, is, this is what you see will be printed. Now this is the most kind of simple or uh, easy way of printing anything. If you would like to keep it a little bit more organized or you have a more complex plan and you would like to set up a, a plot layout, you need to go to documentation and set up a plot layout. And now that happens, you need to set up a paper size and then you can also see, you use these plot tempore title boxes that you can, it's actually uh, already shipped with the software but you can also create your own title boxes. So you can just say okay and then the software tells you this information and then you can fill this up by simply filling up these values. You just click here and type something or if you already used uh, the project parameters, which now I just simply inherit these options, then this, the software can auto fill these. And why is that happening here? It's actually, see now it happened, it's actually because previously some at some stage of this project I went here and I went to the BIM and the project parameters and I simply filled these up. It is the designer name, that's the company name, yes, and so on. So these, data these, data. this data can be inherited into that um, um, plot stamp or, or title box. Now this way you prepare a, a page, um, a layout, and on this layout you can place these drawings. Like for example, if I would like to add this north uh, elevation that I just created previously, I just simply click and drag, and then I can set up the scaling. Now remember, in Archline before, we never set up the scaling. We always use the one-to-one -one scaling of the real world. We actually design a digital representation of the real existing or future building. So, but we can't do it here. Because but we can, at, at the end, when we decide how we would like to uh, demonstrate it or how we would like to document it, then is, that's, the, that's the stage when you need to decide the scaling. So now I will go with the 1 to 100, I think that will be okay. And then I just place it somewhere here. See, there's the text, there, there are everything else. But let, what happens if I, uh, at, now I save this project, tomorrow I continue and then I add more details. How? That will be represented here. Let's just find this uh, elevation. I think it's uh, this uh, this one here. So on the unlinked uh, version here, I add another detail, which I wanted to represent at the beginning. I told you about this. Um, that's right. Serial so horizontal let's, let's direct, uh, dim now. dimension. I think it's very useful. You just pick two points, and then you just keep clicking and then you add those details. It's very simple, very easy to use. So you add, you make changes for, for this design. And then you would like to, obviously, you would like to see this here appearing on this layout. And then if you just click on this one and you say, okay, uh, update, refresh this, then the software will refresh this layout. But even if then you cannot see the changes, yeah, then you, can, you should, change the boundaries because now it's actually just it's probably too small. the boundaries yeah. that's right you have to offset the boundaries to the south and you just need to make it a little bit larger and then you can see more of that drawing mm -hmm. the same way you can actually limit it so if for any reason there is something that you don't want to see then you can just cut it off yes and uh, the advantage of a layout is that this layout obviously cannot can contain not only one single drawing, but it can also contain multiple versions of the same drawing or other drawings as well. So if you just, again, place a, a part here, like, like I don't know for a reason, I would like to add the ground floor itself. So I just drag and drop. Maybe. And then I say, okay, this should be one to 500 because it's just a representation of that model. And I think that's too maybe small. Is, uh, 200, uh, I think. Or 200, do. yeah. I just click and drag and let's say 200 so now I can place it well actually I think it's too far off because we have some oh, uh, big content and then see now again there, there was something far off the building no problem I just limit the offset and then I just move it somewhere there and when I realize it's too large I can go to the settings and I can change the scaling so 
at any point you can make changes, you can update, you can remove, you can rotate because this part is actually behaving like a regular object. You can move it, you can rotate it, you can even remove it or, or change the, the, the layer settings, whatever you wish, you can, you can do that. Still, it's a living condition with the uh, connection with the model. So it yes. changes work both ways. Now, <coughs> let's get this printed into a PDF. And I think that ties into the, uh, to the print tasks. What yeah, print task, and, and there is one more thing, uh, because uh, if you start documenting or create documentation of, the, of your project, you will end up with one layout, another yes. layout, and, an, and another layout. So if you would like to create, if you would like to add another layout, and the current layout is active, then uh, you use the documentation plot layout, and then you set up the paper size, and you say, OK, then the new layout will be created next to this one. So it's an important thing that if the layout is already active, then it won't be ending up in another window. It will be ending up in the same window, and then it's, it's again, a very well-organized content. And again, you can set up uh, uh, the settings. You can select a, a plot stamp. You can update the properties, and then you can just place the content. And now that if you would like to print this out, uh, you can go to the file and print to PDF, and then you can set up the scaling and you can set up what what and how you would like to print the paper size and it's a very important thing that here as now we are printing a layout and there it has two pages we actually should tell the software of which part we would like to mm -hmm. print so if i just click on window and i select and i actually draw a window it's a, it's the window which so through i can see this content around the the item that you <laughs> Which yes. is in case the whole, whole layout, but you could have just part of it. Yes, then it will be represented. But now, as for some reason, I cannot see. And the first reason is the paper is too too large. So I should go with an A4, for example. Still, it's very, very tiny. And why is that? Because it's because the, the scale factor. factor. It has already been scaled down to 1 to 100. And now it's 1 yeah. to 10,000, I think. So yeah, yeah. we have yeah, to put this. Small. So now this time, when it comes to print, you have, you have to do it in a 1 to 1 scale. Yeah. You want to have the actual... Uh, circumstances to be reflected on the on And the then you can either center the pro plot so it will be all to align to the center or you can just refine it using these mm -hmm. values or you can change these values and then at the end you can print it into your PDF file. And what you mentioned uh, talking about the um, print jobs and uh, the print tasks there is a built-in tool which allows you to build up a print task list and then it will be stored together with the project which I will demonstrate now. I will load uh, a later stage of this project. Um, where we already have this. Where we setup. already have that. Open it and then I will also tell you how to uh, do something like that. Okay, let's just quit without saving. So it does and happen sometimes that. you have several layouts and you don't want to manually print them, you just set up the whole job and you can do something else while it works. Yeah, this uh, is something that conserves again uh, a lot of time because, uh, well, now I have the time to set up my layouts and print them out. Okay, that's fine. But a week later, I shouldn't do that same process one by one again by simply uh, clicking on the first layout, second layout, third layout. So I can build up a print task list, a print queue, and add a content here, add another one, add another one. And I can actually set up a ground floor, print it to a PDF, and then print it to a printer. Or I can just set up the same content into the same PDF file. And that way you can create a multi-page PDF, which I already created before. So let me just quickly open that here. It's, yeah, it's this one. So if you set up a print queue like this, setting up the first, second, and third page, and you, you just set up the same target, the same uh, file, you will end up with an eight page or, or multi-page yes. uh, drawing with uh, all the drawings in the several other pages. So this is how you can create one single document with uh, several other uh, PDF uh, pages.